this is quality chess block number something more than 10 and uh, we have a special guest uh, with us uh, today we have a quality chess author mr sam shanklin hey everybody so sam how's the book tour going uh it's going well i have run out of my own copies and i had to buy more from quality chess i never thought i would have to buy another shipment so soon but uh well, I've had to email the people who have bought from my website saying, thanks much for your order, but it's going to be a month until you get it. I hope that's not a problem. And i um, going to the Berkeley Chess School both tonight and tomorrow to uh, to sign some books for the kids there where I first learned chess. And uh, I think winning the U.S. Championship was a very good publicity stunt. Yeah, you won some local tournament, I heard. Yeah, a uh, local event of uh, American players, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we... Uh... You should come here play in Scotland sometime. It's a, a good event. They're tough, right? Sorry? The players are tougher in Scotland, right? Uh, they, they will punch you if you beat them. Aha, gotcha. So uh, in that in that sense, they're tougher. But then, uh, in all fairness, I wouldn't give you much of a chance. They also tell me I don't know how to pronounce my own name. It is a Scottish name, and I can't even imagine what they say. Shanklom, I can't do it. <laughs> but... uh, I, don't, I don't know what you call it. So uh, no, so congratulations on uh, winning the U.S. Championship, and uh, well, thanks. It's gonna come true. It was uh, it was very inspiring to watch, because um, I think one of the things where I'm not going to go into it in, in this vlog, but one thing I want to mention for those who didn't go through the games is, yeah, you were maybe worse in a game or two, but you also had uh, Kawana and uh, and Nakamura uh, in the ropes. I did, yeah. I was uh, a little disappointed not to put those away, but uh, there's this weird thing that the best players on the planet, uh, if they get bad positions, they resist pretty well. Uh, yeah, okay, we, we, we're going to maybe look just for a moment on the, on the, on the Kawana game at some point. But uh, <coughs> yeah, I, I, I was wondering, have you actually beaten anyone over 2,700 yet? Yes, I've beaten Leko, I've beaten Ivanchuk, I mean, not so many, but uh, yeah. A few guys, yeah, okay. So, 2,800 tougher than 27. Problem is I've played very, very few like 2710s. I've won over 2,700. I've played has been more like 2,800. Yeah, because you played board one for the U.S. twice uh, in the World Team. Yeah. And, uh, okay. I mean, I, I did have a chance to play with... I guess, I've played Hari Krishna a couple of times who's like... I mean, he's low 2,700s, but sometimes he's like randomly 2,760. I mean, I've, I've played very few guys who are low 2,700s. I've played much more high 2700s, and there's a real big difference in class. They're much tougher to beat. Okay, so um, so now that you uh, you passed 2700, uh, not only have you um, have you won a bet against me, you won the big one. Yeah, that's very nice. Um, so uh, my lowest weight was 80.1 in December. I almost made it. And you wrote mm -hmm. the book anyway, so yep. um, now I want to know, with our normal um, friendliness in our bets, uh, I remember once you had to run 5k in 20 minutes, or less than 20 minutes, and you yeah. sent me a photo of 20.00, where you had fumbled with the stop button. Yeah, I had to wait another year until I actually got it down to like 1951. Well, I, I thought I was very supportive. I said, that's really well done, very close. Yeah, pretty much. That's, that's exactly, that's the definition of support right there. Yeah, no, I, I thought you needed to, to not uh, win it by, uh, you know, friendliness, but by achievement. Well, it was three miles in, uh, in 1951 was definitely pretty good. I don't know if I can do that now because I haven't been running for a while. In fact, I'm sure I can't do it, but I'm trying to get back into shape. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, me too. Um, I ballooned. Yeah, I was ill, but no, no, mind that. Um, I'm still very fit. I'm still very slim and muscular, but boy, I need to learn to run again. <laughs> but a question about this is, since I actually didn't complete my bet and get down to seventy nine point four kilos, and you wrote a book, does that mean if I get down to seventy nine point four, you have to write another one? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I also wrote in the in the forward to the book or something that uh, if the book was successful, I'd, I would write a second edition. And if it wasn't, then I wouldn't. And this is, well, I mean, time will tell if it's overall a success. But if the first two months are any indication, 
I think it means I have to write a second edition. So, uh, yeah, I, I think if you get down there, I'll write another book. I think, uh, from my perspective, uh, the, I know when you say successful, you mean uh, uh, financially successful as well. Um, we have noticed over the years that authors actually like getting paid as publishers. Uh, but I always go by that if people like a book, it will sell a lot of copies because they will tell their friends about it and right. it will help them. And uh, generally, uh, for me, a commercial book is one that helps people. And the feedback we have received on your book is that people find it very useful. So uh, Yeah, I've been very happy to get such good feedback. I've got people contacting me, you know, tra offering to translate into other languages. I mean, that's sort of the sign you know you've done well. Um, it's gotten good reviews. That makes me happy. I mean, I didn't write this book to get rich. Obviously, I don't think anybody writes a book to get rich. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, the money is nice, but it's more but when it sells well. That's not so much about the money for me. It's more about uh, it's well appreciated. And uh, I think clearly so far the answer to that has been yes. Good. So, so royalties, we don't have to talk about royalties. You don't mind, though. Ah. Ah, yeah, got you. you know okay. how to okay. so, so anyway, um, I have to uh, I have to invite you to a Wimbledon final. Uh, I'm busy this year, um, so it would have to be 2019, I guess. Yeah. We'll figure something out. I think when you wanted to say uh, Wimbledon final... I think you just wanted to give me a bet that you would enjoy winning at the end. I mean, I, I love tennis. It's a lot of fun. But uh, when it comes to that, I, I'm usually one happier to just sort of hang out in the bar with a bunch of good food and some friends and watch on, on the really big screen TV with all the close-ups. Uh, but, yeah, we'll, we'll figure some, some, something out. Uh, it, so, wouldn't, it would amuse me to just watch you blow a ton of money on tennis tickets. Okay, so, uh, so actually uh, watching me lose a lot of money is what it is about for you. Yeah, well, that's part of it, and it's it would be nice if all that money somehow ended up going either towards me or to something that you totally hate, uh, because that would be hilarious. Uh, but um, okay, I have a I have a solution that covers all three. This is like the kinder egg of 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 getting me myself out of taking you to Wimbledon here. Yeah. yeah, what is it? Uh, I will invite you for free to my summer training camp. It okay. Will, it will you cost me money. I will have but, uh, to do something yeah. I really hate, which is being in your presence for a whole week. Yes. And I'm sure well, there was a third thing that hurt in there. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. That sounds like possibly I will a good you for free to my summer camp. Okay. So uh, that that's the, the whole thing. Uh, you will come here. You will be trained for free. I will fly you in donkey class. I have to uh, have to specify. Fair enough. Uh, and um, you you will have to uh, pay for the food and so on. It's uh, not on my bill. It's on someone else's bill. But that's fine. That's, that's my offer. Okay. Um, I wanted just uh, beyond making an absolutely uh, fool of myself here, which I have now done on video for everyone to see so it's honest and above board uh, i wanted to ask you about a few moments in the tournament uh, Are... because there were just some some moments where i was interested in how you were thinking and how you came up with the moves you were doing and maybe you want to you explain me what you were thinking and asking and so on so the first moment here is from round three is that correct yeah that's azoria so here we had a equal opening where uh, he went for you a little bit and then he ended up in a, I think, slightly more difficult position to play. Yeah, it was actually really, really interesting earlier on in the game. But yeah, it was very complicated. So here you, you played the move King F8, if you can explain how you're thinking. Oh, well, it's quite simple. I'm leaving the kill zone. If you look at the previous move, I had played King G8 from H8. I mean, White's last moves of like Bishop C2 from E4, and then when I took on B1, taking with the Bishop instead of the Rook, which clearly advertises that he's willing to leave me with the B file. It's it's so obvious he's just trying to mate me on H7. So leaving the kill zone and bringing my King to F8 and E7, where he's going to be safer, is uh, felt like a good idea. I was actually very happy after Bishop C2 with my decision to swap a pair of rooks because my first instinct was to play King G8 directly. 
Uh, but I think this is actually wrong because White can play rook a to e1, and uh, he has much more attacking chances with all the rooks on the board. So we have king here, and this was my first instinct, but I was I think it's wrong because after rook uh, b to e1, I think uh, the attack is much more dangerous than me having another rook on the b file when I was already controlling it anyway. It doesn't help that much, so. Uh, this, I was quite happy to have found the idea to trade one pair of rooks before playing king g8. Yeah, so you, you simply hear, uh, you're thinking, your problem is on h7, so you mm -hmm. find a safer space for your king. e7. So you come here. Yeah, okay, yeah, here we can see he's really going for it. Yeah, the problem is it's hard to find another move for what. I mean, I hadn't even considered uh, g4 when he played queen e3. It only occurred to me afterwards that that was his idea. When he played queen e3, I thought he was just trying to stop bishop c6 because I can't take on c5. But uh, uh, yeah, because here I can't play bishop c6 anymore. But uh, I thought after rook b2, I'm just ready for queen d6 next. And if he plays rook d1, I have bishop a4. And otherwise, if I go queen d6, I'm just getting a very good position. And then when he played g4, my plan was... Before I even saw that move, my next move, if he did nothing, was to play queen d6, and I thought it was even stronger then, so things were sort of starting to go in my favor. Yeah, I should say you can, of course, with your keyboard, move the pieces back and forwards as well here. Oh, okay, um, sure. So, sure. yeah, I think here the the only little mistake you made in this game here was, was sort of very difficult to guess. It's a computer thing that... Well, I actually don't... King e7 not gonna... was stronger. Yeah, I actually would not consider this move a little mistake. I think it was a big one, and not so much because of the move I made, but because I had probably 25 minutes here to my opponent's 30 seconds and was sort of playing in his time pressure. I definitely had the time to find the best move of king e7. And after I played rook a2, I then saw queen d4 and rook b1 and was sort of hoping he wouldn't find it, which, uh, which he didn't because he was very low on time. So but the fact you... that I saw it right after I moved suggests that I had it well within my potential to realize that uh, rook a2 is not as good as I thought it was. Now, whether I would have found king e7 or not, I don't know. I hope I would have, and I think I would have, but you never know. Uh, but um, I actually think it was a pretty big mistake, because after this rook a2, if he had taken on d4 and played rook to b1, with rook b7 and c5 and c6 coming, I think white's drawing chances are very high. Uh, while if I had played king e7 instead, leaving the rook on the b file, for one more move, I just have absolutely no idea what White is doing. He's practically in stalemate, and I can take on a2 next move. So, so yeah, that makes any sense at all. No, it makes perfect sense. Okay. But uh, you know, it's always easier to explain things after the fact. Yeah. But, uh, yeah so I think King e7 was. I think taking on a2 was a, a more serious mistake than you give it credit for, and uh, it may well. I, I got lucky; it went unpunished. I'm just trying to be a friendly journalist who doesn't criticize, <laughs> even if I cannot pronounce it. So, okay. So, uh, let me pull up another game. Uh, here I, I uh, because we obviously we, we spoke together um, about uh, this tournament on, on uh, another uh, occasion or two. Um, at this point here, uh, you played the open Spanish. Yeah, I mean, I was... That's, not, that's, a, that's not something I've seen you done for, for a long time, if ever. I've never done it. I was a bit under the weather before the tournament uh, started, and I was really feeling lousy for round one. Uh, and I was getting progressively better day by day, and noticeably so, but I was still not feeling great. And I was playing black against Robson, which has historically been... I mean, maybe not now because we've I've turned the tide in the last four or five years, but when I was young, at least, it was a very tough pairing for me, and he would always out-calculate me in complicated lines. And I just won against Azori with black. I was getting double black. I wanted to just play something where I was very solid. I just knew all the theory, knew it inside and out, surprise him, and hopefully just sort of make a draw and go home, uh, which was, in general, not a bad strategy if you're playing black and you can pull it off. But the problem with trying to surprise someone early on is uh, if you play a new line for you, you might just not remember everything or check everything. And that's exactly what happened here. Okay, so uh, you can show us a few moves of what happened here, because uh, very quickly so, you got an advantage, but first you had a bit of a bother. So he played c3, and after bishop e7, um, knight bd2, we transpose straight into the main lines. I've seen bishop e3 here, and I've seen um, bishop c2 as well, I think even queen e2. I checked all these moves, but bishop f4, 
Because it turns out I did have this move in my file, but I hadn't reviewed it or remembered anything, so I was on my own here. But it's actually a very clever move, because White wants to play knight d4 next, which is his typical plan in these positions, and he's overprotecting the e5 pawn in advance. And then after knight d4, if I take it, I'm left with the backward c7 pawn, and he's ready to expel my knight any 4 with f3 as for needed, and then set his own pawn majority in motion. So it's definitely a dangerous uh, idea, but then... I came up with this idea to put the knight on d6, which I think is pretty good. Um, I'm not, I don't think it fully equalizes. White's probably still slightly better if he plays perfectly, but if you compare this to, say, the Mikulowski game that got here, I think, with knight takes d2, queen takes d2, and I think he played, like, c6 and just played queen d7, rook a c8, and sort of overprotected the c6 pawn, said, I have one weakness and you won't beat me. I think he held a draw in the game, but it, uh, I didn't know about this game at the time when I was playing it. It certainly looked miserable, so I didn't really like it. Um... And uh, I thought knight d6 was a bit more combative. It leaves more pieces on the board, and in some cases I'm ready to come to the c4 square, so uh, where I'm threatening to make some problems or at least straighten out my pawn structure. Okay. You want me to keep going, or do you have other yeah, questions? Yeah, uh, just until you got the, won the pawn, basically. Yeah, so he played bishop c2, which makes perfect sense. Uh, the bishop was not doing very much on b3. And uh, he's now cleared the b3 square, which he could either use for the knight to run into c5. So, for example, if I were to play bishop f6, which is a bad move, but it makes some sense because he's trying to challenge um, the strong e5 bishop. After knight b3, I think black is approximately lost because knight c5 is just coming, and then uh, the position is absolutely horrible. Um, and in addition, if I don't play bishop f6, he also has the move b3 at his disposal to try to keep my knight off of the c4 square. I wanted to play knight c4 directly. Because if I can take on b2, I'm happy, or if I can take on e5, I'm happy. But unfortunately, I've just made it after queen h5. So, uh. That's inconvenient. So I played queen d7, which uh, is a simple developing move, but it also sort of carries the quote unquote threat to play uh, knight c4, because now queen h5 will have uh, bishop f5. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think I was sort of expecting b3 here. Uh, I don't know if it's the best move. I still haven't really checked the game in much detail. But and maybe white's a little better, but it's not so clear. And I even have a plan to potentially play like b4 and swing knight b5 into c3 and then play for rook c8 and c5. I'd probably still prefer the white side, but it's it's certainly it's a game. Mm -hmm. um, but Ray played rook e1, which is a perfectly natural move because he's trying to develop his last piece and use the open e file where I've got a bunch of pieces. I calculated for a while and sort of concluded that knight c4 was working. There were definitely some variations I had to check. For example, after takes uh, dc4. He can play either bishop e4 or queen e2. I think queen e2 is the move I was more concerned about, and uh, it's hard for me to hold on to all of the material, but uh, it's not that bad in a lot of ways. Um, is this I was why thinking, you have this bishop h4 move in some line? Sorry? Is this why you have this bishop h4 move? There was some line, I don't know if it's here, where you have some... No, here I'm just losing after bishop f8, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not here, yeah. Yeah, so I, I forget exactly what I had in mind, but I think I was checking um, bishop b4, and now uh, after bishop takes g7, I think I'm okay uh, in one of two ways. Taking on e1 is probably pretty decent, and then taking on f2. And my king is a bit open, but I wasn't particularly worried. Sorry, rook takes f8. Um, I wasn't super worried about this position. I mean, maybe it's more comfortable for white after something like queen h4 and rook e1 is coming, but I, I thought with my queen on g7, I can't have too many disasters coming. Um, there's also, this was not my only way, but I, this is one, for example, that I thought about. I can also probably um, take on uh, g7 with the king, and after queen e6, takes, takes. I thought that despite the pawn down, this probably isn't so bad for black if I play like rook f6 and then rook d8 and play against the d4 pawn. I've got a nice structure and a good bishop. So, or rook d8 directly, maybe. I mean, this this didn't strike me as so terrible for black. Does that make sense at all? Uh, no, I think after e3, it, it actually is quite bad. Oh, uh, yeah? I don't see where you're going, really. Well, bishop a5 and bishop b6. Uh, and try to rook a, so rook a6 you're not worried about? I thought here I'm already better, aren't I? I'm going to start taking everything. And this rook is out of play. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, okay. I mean, I saw a few solutions, so, so I don't know exactly which one I would have played. I would have had to think more carefully during the game if he had gone for this idea with queen e2. But I, I saw enough that I felt 
it's not so bad for black. Um, but Ray played knight f3, which is a pretty serious mistake. It's a very logical move because he wants to just play b3, and then after knight e5, uh, knight takes e5, he's got an enormous position. But uh, bishop g4 is very strong uh, to harass this knight. And what Ray ha what happened was Ray, after queen d3, had just automatically in his head played this extremely natural move, bishop f5, stopping the mate threat with a gain of tempo and pressuring the queen and the bishop. It's very natural, but after queen c3, I think that black is just worse. Um, B3 will come, yeah? Yeah, and white is just better. But unfortunately for him, after g6, which is much less intuitive because it doesn't gain time and it somewhat loosens the king's cover around the dark squares where the bishop on e5 looks good, white is just losing material basically on the spot because bishop takes f3 and knight takes b3 are both massive threats. And in fact, the knight on f3 doesn't really have anywhere to go because if knight d2, I can play bishop b4. So, so we'll just uh, put, put that in here. Yeah, knight d2, I mean... Probably knight takes e5 is pretty good too, but I think bishop b4 is just winning material. Um, and this looks very good for black. So I can, uh, I can say that uh, while we're recording this, I got messages from John that uh, uh, the final volume of his playing one e4 uh, series has been uploaded to the printer, and it will be a part of the video that will be forever remembered as being this moment. All right. Unless Nikos finds a way to uh, remove it, which I don't think he will. Instead so, of Queen, instead of Queen D three, Ray should have tried Queen D one. And the position is enormously complicated. There's tons of ridiculous variations, uh, like Bishop F three, Bishop H seven, King H eight takes. I have any of Knight E five, Queen H three, Knight D two. These are all serious moves. Um, I think uh, instead of Bishop F three, I also can play G six when he takes. I go bishop d4, and I'm winning some material, but it gets it's just an extremely complicated position with tactics flying everywhere on every move and feels approximately impossible for humans to play well. Uh, so this could have been a way for the game to take a somewhat different direction. I mean, here, if so, knight g5, I have bishop f5, and it's very, very messy. I, I, I was expecting I was thinking there was another crazy variation here, which was rook d1, and maybe rook f3. It just feels like the board's on fire. Sure, yeah, it's, it's just a wild, although I think here probably the simplest is bishop takes f3, knight takes e5, and hg6, when that looks like a pretty good piece, but, uh, yeah. you know, it's, but like, for example, even if he just retreats his bishop and gives me an exchange, he's not mating me, but my king will never find a happy home. It's just a wildly complicated position. I was spending basically all my time on that when I decided to play bishop g4. I wasn't confident at all that it was good for me. I mean, it turns out I think it is, but... Uh, I thought my other options were bad, and this one was messy and interesting, so I went for it. But then when he played queen d3, and he played it very quickly, after g6, he's just in horrible shape. Um, so he even was, missed, missed it, like, one move ahead? Yeah, I, I mean, because he played queen d3, like, immediately, and then after g6, he thought for, like, 20 minutes. So this kind of time management I can only attribute to missing g6 completely. Okay, it's also a sort of impulse uh, control you should have been... Missing. Sure. So, but, okay. So, so here, yeah, after g6, you just won a pawn. Pretty much. He could have tried bishop g3 instead of b3, but uh, I was a little more concerned about this in the game than I probably should have been, but because I think black's just in good shape. I mean, I was considering bishop g3 takes, takes, knight b2, queen e2, when the bishop on e7 is loose and bishop g6 is in the air. And I somehow forgot that I can just play bishop b4, which is very strong. I was only considering bishop a3 saving the knight. I mean, I was also considering bishop f6, giving the pawn back, because then after bishop g6, hg, and queen b2, I get c5 through, and then when I get my pawn to c4, I've got a really menacing pawn mass. But after bishop b5, I mean, my king still has some potential issues. Uh, so I was considering this, and I was considering bishop a3. And I thought after bishop a3, here after h4, white can start throwing stuff. Now, I don't know if it will work. I mean, probably in a perfect world it shouldn't. I don't. I, don't, I think black should still be much better here with rook a8 and stuff like that, but... I felt like at least my pieces are pretty sidelined on the queen side, and he has potential to try to open up my king. Mm -hmm. um, so the computer kind of laughs at that line. But Ray instead played b3, and after bishop f3, if he takes my bishop back after knight takes e5, white is completely lost, because if he takes with the rook, I have bishop d6 and queen h3 is coming. And if he takes with the pawn, uh, he has a very crippled four on two pawn majority that won't cause me any problems. Well, in the meantime, I'm going to get c5, c4, d4 very, very quickly and very effectively. So what here do you play? Queen e6 first? Or? 
Just that was my instinct. I think the computer just didn't care and wanted to play rook ad8. It was happy to just play e6, queen d6, and tell white to shove it at that point. But uh, I think my, ins- my my instinct in the game was to play queen d6. Okay. Good. Let's uh, uh, let's move on a little bit because um, we have. Let me see. Uh, we have a game that started a bit weird mm-hmm. uh, here when. Uh, Kawana, he played this very strange g6 against you. Yeah, I mean, I hadn't prepared the Queen's Gambit accepted basically at all for this game. I thought it was, I mean, which was in hindsight incredibly silly because I, I think it's Kawana's most reliable weapon against d4 that he's been using recently. But it's um, much, not, not really clear. He has prop, uh, planned it for this game either. So. Yeah, well, I mean, if he played Queen's Gambit accepted, uh, it, it's not like I surprised him on move one. I'm mm-hmm. sure he had prepared. Wow. But uh, I just didn't expect the Queen's Gambit ex- accepted. I thought he would be on tilt after losing this horrendous game to Azoria. And I noticed that he played the Benoni against Jeffrey, who was approximately the same rating as me at the time. And I thought he was in, you know, he wasn't in a desperate spot by any means of this early in turn, but he was sort of more in need of a win now and against me because I had more points than him. I thought that he would play something much more combative. And I just didn't check the Queen's Gambit accepted, like, at all. And I... I I don't know. I just played a4 more out of inertia than anything else. I was hoping to get some typical isolated queen pawn position where, you know, realistically black is fine, but I thought I can play. And then he played this g6 move, which I just completely didn't understand. And he played it very quickly, so I, I was thinking it must be some kind of preparation, but uh, like really quickly, within a minute or something. But I'm just looking at this position, and the more I looked at it, the more I thought d5 was just incredibly good for white. So it is. I, yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I thought I was just very confused by how how this happened. So okay, so, okay. So at this point here, uh, yeah, uh, we get to. I just want to point out one funny move before that. Actually, sure. after knight takes d5, uh, if he plays uh, king f8, yeah. with the point that there's a lot of pins, uh, the computer is incredibly boring and finds this very simple and completely crushing move, uh, knight to f4, because after queen d1, knight e6 is just the end of the world. But I was calculating all the fun stuff with like uh, takes and uh, knight d4, and it gets pretty fun. Black gets crushed, is long story short. Uh-huh. But uh, anyhow, I, I think you can. You're pretty foolish if you expect Fabiano to play king f8. So. Well, also if you expect him to play g6. So. Sure. Okay, so uh, they, that's one thing with the the top players. They they might make a big mistake, but then they sort of uh, pull themselves together and. And show why they are strong. Yeah. Okay. So, so here, uh, okay, I thought he spent quite a lot of time on what probably quite a yeah. simple decision. Yeah. I saw I saw several ways to win a pawn, and I wanted to find the best one uh, because, for example, I can play I can take on d8, and then I can either take on e6 or play knight g5. If I do something like this, I just thought that after rook d1 check, rook e1. Takes, takes, and knight c6. I'm going to have a really hard time consolidating this position with black's activity. I mean, my guess is this is a pretty easy draw for black. Um, or at least I didn't see a great way forward. I mean, maybe I can try bishop d2, because if I play like bishop e3, he can take on b2 and play bishop c3, and black should definitely hold. But if I play bishop d2 and he goes like rook d8, I don't know. I mean, maybe I can play bishop c3 and accept a very sorry structure on the queen side. But after this, first of all, his structure is just better than mine, and uh, he will probably be able to poke some fun at some weaknesses. But even if he uh, has to resort to playing b5 and then b4, I think he's probably going to be able to simplify the position considerably, and it, it should just be a draw. Well, I mean, the, obviously. The end game with uh, knight and rook and three against two is uh, played a number of times by Karkov. It's really dangerous for black. It is, for That's sure. A, I think I remember a Kramnik Tomaszewski game as well. Um, but uh, I thought that was like the best I could ever hope for. Mm-hmm. And even that, I wasn't sure it would be a win. So I was looking for something better. And if knight c5, uh, knight c6, unfortunately, after knight e6, if I could just take this bishop and play like bishop d2 or bishop e3, I'd be, I think, completely winning. Because uh, my his bishop on g7 is the best minor piece on the board, but I can't because of the pen. And here, it's not so easy. Because if I move my bishop, he has bishop takes b2. And I think already black is sort of equalizing. Um, king f1? Bishop e5, maybe, yeah, but uh, here I guess I have rook takes e5 and knight c7, but maybe then knight d3 and... Uh, no, 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 knight e8. 
and sorry, what? Takes takes knight c7, knight d3. Knight takes e8. Yes, and takes. And bishop d2 or something? Bishop but then knight takes b2 and knight c4. Mm, you can, you can't, there's no good squares, no? No, I mean, I can play bishop h6, but even if, like, I can play bishop h6, knight b2, rook b1, knight d3, and, like, g3 or something, but it's it's not that impressive. Um, It's, it's good for white, he's better, but he's probably not going to win. Uh, so... I can't let this move queen e2, where here I was happy to let black keep his pawn uh, if he wants to play something ridiculous like rook e8, but otherwise it's going to be pretty hard for him to... Uh, uh, he's not saving the pawn otherwise, and then uh, I will be able to get the same kind of thing without allowing counterplay in the end game. Well, for me, actually, uh, what surprised me was you didn't play this faster. Yeah, well, um, I had some other things on my mind. Um, Queen d5, as he played, I had to be ready for because it looked like a very good move centralizing the queen, and I had to have found this knight g5 idea in advance, because after queen d5, I think if I don't have this rook d1, knight g5, he's equalizing pretty cleanly, because knight c6 and knight d4 is very fast. Mm -hmm. So I had to find that before playing queen e2. So rook d1, queen f5, knight g5. And my whole point was rook e8. Um... I was, my plan in the game, I mean, I, I would have had to think, but my plan or instinct was rook a3. Uh, knight e4, I think, is the computer's choice, which might be even stronger. But after rook a3, knight c6, I saw this nice idea that after rook f3, queen e5, I can go rook e3, because he can't take my knight on account of rook e6, and black is lost, uh, which I thought was a nice variation. And I thought if I can take on e6 and get my rook to e3, I should win easily. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not that simple because he can play queen c5, uh, which I was still struggling a little bit with. Because if I play knight takes e6, he can go knight d4. And uh, I was, wrong. yeah, things have gone wrong. Uh, so, but I can't, I can't take on e6. But otherwise, it's not so easy to find a move. But rook f7 was what I had in mind, and uh, I thought it was still very dangerous for black. And I was happier to play this position with equal material than that endgame upon up. But uh, this is sort of what I was expecting. But after he played knight c6, I sort of got this same end game where uh, I was able to keep my rook on the d-file and not let it get traded off, and I was pretty happy about that. Well, here at this moment, I thought you uh, you didn't play the best way. Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, I think bishop e3 was the best move. I was I didn't like this because of rook e8. Rook ac1. Sorry, where? Rook ac1. Yeah, uh, but and then rook takes c3. I take back. Rook g5. Rook c6. Yeah, I saw this much, but I thought there was maybe some potential for simplification. I wasn't sure. I, th I, um, think, I think this is just a winning. That's what I thought during the game. I thought it was just winning this on me. This is just winning, so can you show me how? Uh, <laughs> I might be wrong. Um, I mean, I thought he's going to play a5, put the rook on c5. He's ready for rook c2 or rook c3 at any moment. I mean, I thought I'm going to stay a pawn up. It's not like he's equalizing material, but the, these pawns are not good, and I thought a lot of them are trading. I thought this so. was very close to winning. Um, well, probably we're both wrong. I mean, maybe it's just good winning chances, uh, but my sense was it was much closer to a draw. It's, uh, it's worth investigating. Yeah. Um, in any case, I thought, in addition, I thought that... Uh, Back here, I didn't see a great route for my knight back into the game. Maybe I can just go back to f3 after bishop e3, rook e8. But, uh, you know, um, I thought knight e6 made a lot of sense, but I missed this idea that he had to play bishop f4, which I think is very strong, because without that, I think I'm sort of just consolidating my extra pawn. Well, but even as it came, you had, uh, had a few chances. Um, so knight e6, bishop e5, bishop e3. Uh, we'll go mm -hmm. and rook e8, knight c5, and all this take on f4, take, take. So, uh, bishop f4 I missed, this is a really strong move. Um, yeah, it's, uh, bishop and e3 is your best piece. So it's really right. nice. But here I think rook ac1 was uh, was quite strong. Yeah, I probably should have done this. I think I am probably spoofed by rook e2, but probably and for no good reason. And, uh, Sorry? f3. Right, and now rook t4 or something. I mean, I was... Sort of spooked by stuff like this. I don't. Maybe I shouldn't have been. But it's, it's not so clear. Um, but already things are not so easy anymore. I don't know if you need to play b three or something. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's this may well have been a better try than what I did, but it certainly is not like convincing me that what's technically winning position and that, uh, you know, I, just, I have a clear route to just bringing in the full point. No, no, no. I think uh, this is. The, I think this is a very normal cadence with with uh, a game like this where you don't win is uh, that some little finesse at some point uh, makes it a little bit easier for the opponent to make counterplay, and then eventually mm-hmm. it becomes too much. Um, yeah. Also, I, I think this was this wasn't me though, but I think at this point here, I think the engine said the rook a three was interesting. Of course, I hadn't even considered this move, and I still don't understand the point. Oh, but, it's, uh, it's to play rook c3 and b3. Uh huh. It, 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 the, the machine had to teach stupid me for, for a while what this was about. Um, yeah, that, that's a very high class move that I hadn't even considered. No, 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 I, it's, it's, uh, just having it as a candidate is very difficult. But the, the other moves were, were mine. Uh, they were just very natural. This is my instinct always to get the pieces in uh, mm-hmm. if possible. And uh, I'm I'm st- I'm still very much under the weather because your game started at 11:30 at night for me Indian time, and I was teaching again uh, at 10:30. We all met for breakfast at 9:30 until the end of the camp when I failed to show up on time. As a yeah, teacher, as a teacher with my strict rules, but uh, everyone was just laughing. That's how it did how you did last night. Um, yeah. Okay, so I have uh, one one final game I want to just look at briefly. Yeah, sure. Um, which is here, uh, later on you could maybe uh, play it on move 40, king h3, I just want to mention. Yeah, I probably I, I, could I looked have. a little bit, I don't think it's enough. So I don't think so either. I think it would have put him under a lot more pressure, and to be fair, this is his 40th move, but it's not too hard to play for black, and uh, I think I could have made him suffer a bit, but my guess is it's still a little bit of a draw. So, okay, so uh, last round. Uh, so there's some moments here that have been, been covered already. So this h3 and here, as you, as you mentioned somewhere, knight a5 is... Yeah, is a crazy move. yeah, this was quite interesting preparation. After ef, uh, my second wanted me to play queen e2 check here, or at least that was when his file, queen e7, knight h3, f3 takes... Takes, takes, and this was, this was definitely interesting, and he came with the idea to play knight d2 to f1 to e3. Uh, okay, but I, was, I, I, I would say if you play like this, then uh, at least take on e7, uh, if you let me here. Uh, I mean, maybe that's what it was. I don't even remember, to and, be honest. And g3 awesome. and knight d2 and then take an f3, and you can play against the weak d5 pawn. It's sure. Very, it's very, very little. but uh, it's, it's slightly it's, better, it's, but... Uh, but I wanted to instead play the move King F1, uh, which I think is more interesting. Um, it's uh, it's not technically the best move. I think the computer is showing Black is equalizing with the only move H5 here, which already if you're out of prep after Knight A to find Knight A5 and then Knight G, and then have the stones to play Knight G4 and then H5. I mean, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't think many people in prep. Uh, even thinking they would face this, would have prepared for King F1 to a level where they remember H5. Yeah, um, and then even, and even after H5, the computer calls it equal, but I would much prefer the white side. It's so easy to play Knight D2, Knight F3, Rookie, one check, start attacking, and Black's extra pawn doesn't really seem to do very much, and uh, practically I think it's much more pleasant for white. Yep. So, okay, so uh, the way it came, uh, you managed to you get quite a nice position uh, here. You play, played a very nice way with, with g5 and the yeah, it was an important move because he was going to play h6 otherwise. Yeah. So, because we we come here to an interesting moment in the game here, where here you have a chance to block your book for the first time. Uh, well, I've had several chances in the tournament to plug my book, but uh... well, in this uh, in this video, yeah, because uh, originally we were working with the book on the working title of Pawn Stone Move yeah. Backwards. I'd also point out previously, I don't know if it was possible to avoid, but I was a very very happy guy when I saw Black put his bishop on g7. That's a really lousy piece now. Um, but playing knight b3, I had a few ideas in mind. Uh, one was to play knight c5, but my biggest idea was actually to play knight c1, uh, which I played next move anyway. But so, but I guess we could call knight c5 a quote-unquote threat, a positional threat, which Black felt the need to respond to with b6. Now, this was a mistake, for sure. But uh, after b6, he's now 
severely compromised the life scores around this king. And this is permanent. And this is sort of yes. the point of your uh, move backwards. Of, of the pawns don't move backwards. Yeah. So let's let's just very slowly go through here. We see how you play some moves well, and flex and just to go back for just one second is just to point out the premise that one bad piece makes a bad position. And after let's say bishop d5, bishop g7. You know, Black's bishop on g7 is lousy. A lot of his other pieces are not great. The reason I'm not crushing him right now is that my knight on d2 is not very good. All of my other pieces make perfect sense. So I spent the next several moves trying to improve my knight. Um, so going forward to this position after knight b d3, king b7, Black now threatens a6, which not only kicks my bishop away, but actually wins it. And here I'm going to plug my book again. After knight b4, uh, this knight is very actively placed. I'm eyeing the weak d5 pawn, the weak a6 square, and black can get rid of it right now with the move a5 and send it right back where it came from to d3. But he has played the move a5, which not only loosens the b5 square considerably and lets my bishop stay there forever unopposed, dominating the b8 knight, but also gives me a hook to open the position. I can play b4 at any moment to start to give his king a little nightmare to deal with. <laughs> that makes sense. Yes, it does. Uh, and uh, we, we get that point uh, in a few moves anyway. Uh, yeah. Just in an in improved version. He played queen d8. Yeah, I think he must have missed. My guess is what he missed is knight e5. Uh, this is a very difficult candidate move because black's bishop on g7 is a total joke and uh, he'd love to trade it off. I think what he missed was that after takes takes knight c5, I can actually take on d6 and go rook e7 and black is crushed. And king e8, I King I go knight c6, takes, takes, and rook b7. I have either g7 or rook, rook b6 with mate. That's a very nice line. Yeah, and if he plays uh, king c8, I go uh, rook c7, and at the end of all this, he has two hanging knights. Yep. So uh, I think that's probably why why he played queen d8, which allowed knight e5. My guess is he, he missed this, he takes b6, but I don't know, I didn't talk to him after the game. It's very typical in, a, in an unpleasant position like this, the tactics will show up that uh, are not in your favor. Right. So, um, so okay, so queen c7, queen b3 here, and you managed to win a pawn, which is always pleasant. Yeah. And after queen, b, after queen b3, he's just got a problem. He's got to lose d5, f7, or h7. One of them is going, mm -hmm. and there's nothing you can do about it. So, so anyway, here comes your ne next moment. Yeah. Well, I'll point out one thing is what I really want to do is play uh, after a5, I want to go bishop b5 and knight d3. And I'm quite fortunate that he can't play a5 here because here if he goes like, let's say, a5, knight c2, bishop takes e5. I mean, previously, he loved the movie really wants to play as bishop e5. He can't take on e5 now because of rook e5 and the d5 pawn is lost. Um, but what he'd like to do is play a5, uh, knight c2, bishop e5. And if I take with the rook, he goes knight c6, kicks my rook away, knight g5 is next, and black is suddenly pretty close to equalizing. Uh, so it's very fortunate for me that after a5, I have this strike, knight takes d5, uh, which is why he played king a7. And Because um, I'd like to play bishop b5 here and then knight back to d3, but I'm not fast enough. Uh, the knight is hanging. But after knight d5, black is immediately crushed. Rook d5, bishop b4, queen d6, knight f7, winning the house. Uh, but so when he plays king a7, now... I'm able to provoke his pawn to a5 in such a way that my bishop does get to b5 in time. Because after queen a4, I force him to play a5. And now after bishop b5, of course, he cannot take my knight because the pawn is pinned. And now I've got this completely strategically dominant position. He can never take on e5 because de will trap the rook. And the knight on b8 is dominated, blacks the pawn down, all my pieces are coming. It's just over. Yeah. Uh, Tanya and uh, Tanya Sachdev and I we were following the game uh, mm -hmm. live in the middle of the night. And uh, I should say that there was like two moves we didn't guess and since we, we followed it from move 15 and until almost the very end. And one of them was knight f3, which is a really strong move. You don't allow the exchange of the bishop, protect your pawn in total control. Yep. Uh, and I will say here, you were thinking and uh, we were trying, you know, b4 uh, to make things work. A takes b, knight takes or pawn takes or something. We realized we just needed to reinforce it with a3. Yes, I'm preparing b4 because I wanted to play b4 to open the position, but the problem is, of course, he cannot take on c3 because of rook c1 and the queen is lost. But if he takes on d4 with the pawn, now if I take with the c pawn, uh, he can take on d4 and wake up the sleeping bishop on g7. Well, it's almost certainly still winning because black's king is going to be taken for a ride. But uh, And if I take with the queen, uh, he can go knight c6 and knight a5. I just thought. 
He's doing absolutely nothing. I'm not particularly worried about counterplay from the Knight on B8 and Bishop on H8, both doing absolutely nothing. So I thought, why not simply play A3? I'm sort of telegraphing B4 next, but what's he going to do about it? Uh, I don't have any idea. And once I play B4 then, uh, if he plays A, B, I take with the A pawn, and then everything is still solid, he can't take C3, he can't bring his pieces, and Rook A1 is coming. So, I mean, if uh, if I felt there was any kind of counterplay, I would have probably played something a bit more direct or maybe spent more time trying to make B4 work, but I thought there was simply no need. Okay, so here he played Knight C6, and you had a chance to just win the house. Yeah, I mean, I probably, I, I definitely could have played B4 as well, but I, I calculated out this uh, after all these exchanges, I got some endgame two pawns up, and uh, I thought I can put that away pretty easily. Because I mean, the one key thing to note is that after Queen E8, if he takes on G5, uh, I can play Knight 7 but this is not wildly complicated either. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, you know, it's so easy that uh, Tanya and I had it. No, to be fair, I did miss Queen C4 here during the game, but uh, after at the ah, end, after no, 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 we had even that. <laughs> well, good for you guys, but at the end it doesn't even matter because I'm still just like two palms up for dead nothing. Yeah, yeah, we, we also were allowed to move the pieces around, so. Yeah. Okay, so, so after D8, I mean, I don't know, I, probably I could have just taken on F4 or G6, but I thought simplicity is fine. I mean, I was calculating something like this, Knight E4, computer gives F3. I think Rook E4 wins very, very easily. From I mean, a there's, human perspective, like, it's totally nonsense to leave the Queen's on with two pawns up. Yeah, I agree. So just taking the queen and knight g6, and it's, I mean, it, unless you do something absurdly stupid, why well, should just win this game? Well, yeah, it's easier to do something stupid with the queen's on. That's true. Uh, that can come some, some weird moves. So anyway, so we have a, just to have a few moves here, 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 and he resigned with knight d5 on the way. He looked yeah. like, like he'd been spanked, I have to say. Uh, uh, you mean in the live video or just from the game? Well, um, <laughs> he, he just absolutely looks spanked uh, on the live video. Right, but you mean he looks spanked from the game, or like what he looked like physically, his facial expressions on the video? His facial expressions on the video. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Wonder's a very talented kid. I predict a very bright future for him, but, uh, you know, and as he probably was ho had higher hopes for this game because he had just picked up his first win the previous rounds, but uh, I was lucky I was able to put him away. Well, it's, one thing is to lose a fight. Another thing is to get spanked. So, anyway, I think we should round this up. Uh, what's next for you? Uh, Capital Black Memorial. I'm leaving in on Sunday, so that's you know, two days from now. It's probably the video will probably I'll probably be gone before the video is out. Oh, definitely, definitely, because uh, we all need the weekend off here. Yeah, I bet. And it's a long weekend, as someone will have seen in the uh, video at some point where it popped up. Uh, John was telling me that uh, remember the office is uh, closed Monday, and we're back to see you on Tuesday. Are we a Scottish Independence Day or something? What is it? Uh, no, no, no. We're still colonized. Oh, okay. So, uh, no. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, good luck in Cuba. And um, I'm just going to turn this off and say goodbye to you in private. Yeah, sure.